Greetings, fellow action figure connoisseurs, and welcome to another episode of Digital Caveman Presents Star Wars Wednesday. I, as always, am your host, the Digital Caveman, and today I will be presenting you with Star Wars The Black Series for LOM from The Empire Strikes Back, a bounty hunter. Thank you for watching this video or any of my other videos that you may have run across, which I hope is all of them. Only support from viewers like you make this programming possible. Each view does count, and I do appreciate each and every single view that I receive. Thank you, thank you, and thank you so very much for supporting this channel through viewing. Comment below, like, share, subscribe if you'd like to see more reviews, or just help the channel out further, or both, that's even better. And don't forget to ding that bell so that in the future you will be notified as my new content becomes available. And with all that said, let's get into it. First up, let's start things off by taking a look at the packaging. And on the top, there's a hook and some tape, and that's it. Star Wars The Black Series. Nice window showcasing the figure and his accessory. And that classic Black Series artwork. For Lom, assortment number, age four and up. Warning, don't stick things in your pile that don't belong there. Hasbro print. On the bottom, small print, fine print, legalese and made in china print and a barcode on this side for lom and on this side he's number 67 for lom on the back star wars the black series number 67 for lom a rusty droid with insectile features. Fulam was originally a protocol droid, but logic glitches allowed him to escape his programming and become a bounty hunter. That proved a perfect occupation for the cold, calculating mechanical. And then, warning, don't say things in your French pie hole, that language pie hole, or that language pie hole that don't belong there. Some more small, fine, and legalese print. Another Made in China print, a Disney print, and a Hasbro print. That, my friends, completes our look at the packaging. Let's take a look at the figure and his accessory. And first of all, handy dandy tweezers. And let's take a look at his rifle. And let's shed a little light on that. And nothing new. This is a rifle we've seen released with Stormtroopers several times. Accurate to the media, though. Nice molded details in it, too. Uh, let's take a look at the figure himself. I think there's a lot of C-3PO reuse going on here, and that's okay, because it's appropriate. The head isn't, and the chest isn't. The arms, maybe wires, the crotch piece, the legs, they might all be reused. Probably should have pulled a C-3PO for comparisons, but I didn't. So, I like the paintwork on the eyes. That's really nice. The head sculpt is just cool looking all around. Always thought this was a cool looking dude. And, you know, bits of paint here and there. Nice sculpt. Let's take a look at his articulation. He can look up that high. He can look down that low. Let's see. No chicken neck. He does have a little bit of, well, I'll say a little bit. He's got some waggle in there. He will do the full exorcist. The arms are a little bit tricky because this is an overlay well, it's not a separate overlay piece. It's actually part of the torso piece, it looks like. But it will allow you to raise the arm that high. There's a cut here at the upper bicep for a 360 degree rotation. And there is some rotation in here. It's just hard to get it to do a full 360. But it will go all the way around, but you have to really work at it. Um, if you're not careful, this little rod piece right here, it's on a ball joint in here, and it will pop out. And he does have an elbow bend, and let's say it pretty much stays 
Um, that's a, a 90 degree bend is about all that you get out of it, which is fine. And it partly has to do with this rod here, which there's a slot in its forearm and it does move uh, with the arm bend. You just have to be really, really careful with it. So it will bend down that far. So not a lot of bend, but it, you know, it does have some. Full 360 degree rotation at the wrist on an in and out hinge. And on this side, uh, up and down hinge. Very nice for the trigger finger hand. Uh, so cut here where the, the top meets the lower, the top torso meets the lower torso. And that gives him a little bit of hula action going on there. It will not, well, I say it won't. It will, if you force it, give a full 360 degrees of rotation. And there's also, well, I say there is, it's not. I thought there was some movement here, but there is, does not seem to be any movement on the lower part of the, the wire section. Uh, as far as the hips, the legs can go out about that far. Uh, there's a cut hidden under the, the droid armor part, and it will give you some it won't quite go a full 360, but I mean, the piece will spin 360 degrees, but because of this, it kind of gets in the way and I don't want to mess it up trying to force it. At the knee, it actually will bend forward that far and give you that much bend back. And it is not on a hinge and swivel. At the ankle, Tilt down that far, tilt up that far, and forward facing pin for rocker. And that, my friends, completes a look at the figure and his accessory. It's time for my favorite part of a review, comparisons. And let's start him off with some other Empire Strikes Back bounty hunters. Here he is with the Archive Edition IG-88, who's on a stand because he won't stand up on his own. So if you guys are thinking about this guy, you don't have him already. Uh, he does not really stand up on his own. At least I haven't been able to get him to. Here is the first issue Boba Fett from the Black Series which is his Empire Strikes Back look. Here he is with the first release of Bosk. And here he is with who I always thought as a kid was his partner. Uh, Zuckus. And from the Mandalorian, because he's a droid bounty hunter also, here we have Q90 or Zero. And here he is with the Archive Edition 501st Clone Trooper. How's he scale up with other lines? Let's take a look from the Marvel Legends series. Here we have making his cameo appearance, Stan the Man Lee. From G.I. Joe Classified series, here we have the Hasbro Pulse exclusive Regal variant Cobra Commander. And for a 7-inch comparison from McFarlane Toys' DC Multiverse line, we have the three Jokers, the Joker, the Clown. And that, my friends, completes a look at comparisons. For final thoughts on Star Wars The Black Series, Empire Strikes Back, Forlom, 
I say Empire Strikes Back because he was in the movie, not because he was branded as such. Um, I think this is a nice looking figure. There is, I think, some reuse from C-3PO in it, which is appropriate. Seeing as how this guy was a protocol droid too before, you know, his logic screwed up and made him a bounty hunter. But he, I think he's really a really nice looking figure and he will go right in with the rest of my Empire uh, Bounty Hunters, Empire Strikes Back Bounty Hunters. That does it for the review. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it. Only support from viewers like you make this programming possible. Each view does count, and I do appreciate each and every single view that I receive. Thank you, thank you, and thank you so very much for supporting this channel through viewing. Comment below, like, share, subscribe if you'd like to see more reviews or just to help the channel out. That's cool too. Or both, that's even better. And don't forget to ding that bell so that in the future you will be notified as my new content becomes available. That's a wrap, folks. I'll see you next time.